Professor Medina will take us through a chronic case of rhabdo. It was a lady, the African American, uh, 60, I think she was 66 year old female that came in for follow up on diabetes and hyperlipidemia and um, she complained of generalized weakness. Uh, didn't really complain of muscle uh, aches or pains, she just said that she really felt fatigue and she was having difficulty getting up from a sitting position. She had to use her arms to lift herself up out of the chair. Uh, so on examination, her uh, lungs and heart were normal. I examined her joints uh, to see if maybe it was some type of arthritis or arthralgias, but they was, her joint exams were normal. She had full range of motion in her extremities. I didn't check for any muscle aches or any muscle tenderness. Um, and I wasn't really sure what was going on because of the fatigue that she had. I did a, just a general kind of shot in the dark, did a lot of labs, including a chem panel, CBC, TSH, um, and I also did a CK. Um, and I, I'm trying to think of why I did a CK other than just she was tired. Maybe it was her review of her medications at the time where she was taking uh, lipid lowering agents. So um, the next day when I reviewed her labs, I found that her CK was extremely elevated, 6,300 I think was the, le le uh, the, the level, and the normal is I think it's in the 20s or 30s, so it was extremely elevated. And the other labs that were abnormal was the AST and ALT, and she also had her creatinine had crept up from three months prior. It was a 1.2, and it had been below one prior to that. So on review of the labs, um, I was concerned that maybe, and, and after reviewing the labs, I reviewed her medication again and found that she was taking uh, lipid lowering agents, a combination of simvastatin, 80 milligrams a day, and gemfibrosol, 600 milligrams twice a day. And uh, so I thought maybe it was related to, um, to muscle injury secondary to the statins. I also did additional labs, including um, to, to see what was the cause of the elevated AST and ALT and those um, were hepatitis panel, which were negative. Uh, and on further review, the AST and ALT can be elevated due to muscle, um, muscle damage. So after um, having her discontinue, calling her that same day, discontinuing the, the, uh, uh, the statin and also the fibric acid derivative, uh, we repeated um, labs a few weeks later and the patient, I actually was calling her on a regular basis to make sure she was better. She gradually got better. Two weeks later, her labs were almost back to normal. A month later, her labs were back to normal. Since then, uh, about, uh, it must be about two years ago, the FDA recommended that you, know, you do, do not uh, exceed uh, the dosage of 40 milligrams a day of simvastatin because there was reports of uh, patients, um, drug-induced myositis with, with drug dosages above 40 milligrams a day. So today, the recommendation is not to get more than 40 milligrams of simvastatin and also to be cautious when you combine the simvastatin with fibric acid derivatives such as gemfibrosol. So uh, that was my case. Up next, Professor Roth with an acute case of rhabdo. We had a 18-year-old male student athlete present with right forearm swelling. Um, on his history, I discovered that he had just started an intense weightlifting program with the baseball team at that time, but he, his quote was, I was sitting in class and I looked down and it looked like it was full of fluid, so I came to see you. Okay. Um, he denied fever, fatigue, myalgia, which was key. Um, you would expect it in rhabdo, but he didn't have any pain yet um, at that time. Also, no malaise. Um, also no abdominal pain, you know, you're thinking kidneys, so no abdominal pain, uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, no chest pain, shortness of breath, because one of your differentials, right, with rhabdo is an MI, um, but no chest pain. So at the end of the exam, what do we have? We have right forearm swelling and a history of, a, of extreme exertion. Oh, I so, should say that I also did a urine dip in the office um, to look for any blood in the urine, which at that time he did not have. 
but that didn't rule out rhabdo, obviously. So um, I sent him for a CK as well as a CMP, CBC, and a myoglobinuria. Um, I also gave him ER precautions. Um, I did not send him at that time to the ER because keep in mind, he didn't have that, that triad. He didn't have muscle weakness or myalgias or pigmenturia. He literally just had right forearm swelling. So, and was feeling great. So took him out of baseball completely, took him out of all lifting completely, called his athletic trainer, called his coach, wrote him a note, you're resting, period. Also gave him a hydration protocol um, with specific instructions and how much he was supposed to drink and what he was supposed to drink. Also to stay away from all alcohol, drugs, heat, any dehydrating factors. And then the ER precautions included um, that Coca-Cola colored urine, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, muscle weakness, muscle pain, chest pain, you name it. I wrote it down and told him if any of these happen, you get to the ER immediately. Um, and as you guys know, it, CK usually presents with um, five times the normal. Uh, so that's going to range anywhere from 1,500 to 100,000. His level was 2,532. Um, and the only other abnormals that were found was his ele elevated liver enzymes. So his AST was 88 and his ALT was 120. Uh, so that was back. Um, when we did allow him to go back, it was a slow progression. Um, and then also talking a lot again about hydration and um, how, how to avoid falling back into that position again. Learn um, something from it, but you don't always see the perfect triad. Um, but if, if the history is there and maybe you have some swelling like that with no other cause, um, start thinking about it and don't be afraid. <laughs>